Today on Codependent, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Normally, I talk about animations and effects in Flex. And today, I'm going to talk about components and how they use animations. So one of the first things that I worked on when I started on the Flex SDK team was the scroll bar component for Flex 4. So it's still the main component I think about when I think about the framework because I spent a lot of quality time with that component in particular. And recently we added animated behavior to scroll bar so that we could get a little bit more smooth and interesting um, and, and usable experience out of this base component that you see in a lot of different places. So I'm going to show how some of that works. Um, in the Flex 4 components. So I've got a simple application here that shows an H scroll bar sort of sitting there on its own looking very lonely, an H slider, and then also a, a scroll bar that's automatically incorporated into this text area because the content is bigger than the width and the height that I assigned to the text area. Um, so if we page in this one, if we click in the track in the scroll bar, you'll see this paging behavior as the thumb moves back and forth. It's actually animating underneath instead of doing the more sort of choppy paged behavior in Flex 3, although it's a little bit difficult to tell in the paging operation. If you step, however, if you click on the right or the left button, you'll see kind of a nice smooth uh, stepping behavior as it goes. And again, this is, uh, this is a smooth animation because we're basically calculating one effect. We're saying animate from here to there over time until they let go of the button. And then we're doing animation updates, which are going to happen probably at a smoother and smaller increment than um, the equivalent stepping operations that we used to do. So simple paging and stepping animated behavior for scroll bars. In the meantime, slider has mostly the same animated behavior it always had. If you click in the track, we'll automatically animate. Um, if, you, if you want that behavior, we'll automatically animate to that value on the slider. The difference here is that uh, we traditionally had a slide duration that you could specify that would say, um, well, by default, it would take 300 milliseconds to animate to this new value. Well, what if you're animating to a value that's right next to where you are right now? You actually don't want it to take 300 milliseconds to move such a small distance. So instead, uh, the slide duration now means move the proportion of this time, depending on how far away you are. So we take the fraction uh, away, um, of the fraction of the distance that you are away from the endpoint, and we multiply that fraction times the slide duration to get a reasonable amount of time to uh, move over the slider track. Now I'm going to go back to the scroll bar and show you um, some new behavior that we added for Flex4, which is animation uh, to a specific clicked area. So normally, by default, if you click on the track, it'll animate to there over time. It'll page to that value. Um, but if you shift click, then it'll automatically animate to it. It's basically like a slider behavior, except on the scroll bar. This is a behavior that I've seen in scroll bars in applications on the desktop, um, but we didn't actually used to have this in the Flex component kit itself. Uh, and now we do. Um, so some of the anime behavior is sort of, you know, academic when you're looking at the scroll bar on its own. It's a little bit more interesting when you're looking at it with some content below. So we have some uh, text area here that we can look at, and we can page down in it, and we can sort of see this paging behavior where you can actually see the text moving. So instead of the behavior that we had in Flex 3 was that you would see these new pages of information, and if you didn't know where you were clicking on the track, or know the text by heart, then it might be difficult for you to actually just tell on the fly which direction you were moving because they were just new screens of information clicking into place. Well, if we animate that content, then you can actually pick up the subtle cues that the text is moving in a particular direction. It's easier for you to sort of clue into that on what's going on in the GUI. Uh, similarly, if we step, we've got a nice smoothing, uh, smooth scrolling behavior um, as the text moves back and forth. Um, now, I, I saw in, uh, in an application, I, I won't name it, but it's a, a financial management uh, application that manages your checkbook for you. And they decided that animation would be really cool in the check register. So if you clicked in the, you know, the track or the buttons of the scroll bar in your register, then it would scroll the values. It would go you know, each page. So you click in the track, and it would page a value uh, up. And that was, that was nice. You got the animated behavior, so you knew you were paging up in the register. Or if you click in the track below the button, then it would also scroll up. It was the most ridiculous behavior I've ever seen. They added animation without actually thinking about what they were doing, because they were always scrolling the content on the screen in the same direction, no matter which way the content was actually supposed to be using. So the trick here is to use animation uh, for, uh, for good and not evil. Uh, and to actually help people see what they're doing in the GUI and where they've come from and where they're going to. That's going to help them out a little bit more than just sort of gratuitously throwing animation at the problem and hoping that looking cooler is actually going to help out the user.
Um, so new Flex 4 components. This is just the scroller and the slider, but obviously we have a lot more to offer there as well. Uh, I'm just sort of attached to these because of the animated behavior that we've edited recently. Um, but if you want to check these out, check out the Flex 4 SDK in general. Um, and also check out this application and other related stuff on my blog at graphics-geek.blogspot.com.